Welcome, I'm Nan Jokerst, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the clean room where we perform the majority of our fabrication steps. We've introduced the basic technologies that we use in fabrication, including thin film deposition, patterning, and etching. But before we go into more detail about fabrication, let's look at the extremely clean environments that we need for high yield fabrication. The extremely clean environment for fabrication is called a clean room. And as the name suggests, a clean room is, well, a clean room where people and equipment can perform fabrication processes. Clean rooms are used in many industries where small particles can negatively affect the manufacturing process or yield, including semiconductor manufacturing, optics, pharmaceuticals, biotech, and medical devices. But what exactly does a clean room mean? Clean rooms have a control level of airborne particle contamination per cubic meter at a specified particle size, as well as controlled temperature and humidity. Clean rooms have an ISO, or International Organization of Standardization rating, based upon the number of particles per cubic meter of air. As an example, the outdoor air in a typical city environment contains millions of particles per cubic meter that are a half a micron and larger in diameter. In contrast, a typical clean room, which is rated ISO 5, can only have 3,520 particles per cubic meter that over a, are over a half micron in diameter. The clean rooms that you'll see in these videos are rated ISO 5 and 6. Particulate contamination is controlled with special airflow in the clean room designed to filter out airborne particles and to minimize the amount of particles that are stirred up from surfaces. The key air filtration component for clean rooms is the high efficiency particulate air or HEPA filter that is used to trap and filter out particles that are 0.3 microns and larger in size. All of the air delivered through a clean room passes through these HEPA filters, which are typically located in the ceiling. The extra air is then typically flowing out through vents near the floor. What causes airborne particulate contamination in a clean room? Mostly, it's the people. Even motionless people shed particles, and if you start moving around, you shed millions of particles per minute. So personnel working in clean rooms must practice particle control. They enter and exit the clean room through airlocks and or a gowning room that are at higher pressure than the outside. This pressure difference ensures that clean air flows out of the clean room rather than dirty air flowing into the clean room when the doors open and people enter and exit. People's clothing sheds an enormous number of particles. So people in a clean room must wear special clean room suits that don't shed particles and that contain the particles that are shed from the person's clothing underneath the clean room garment. They are even designed to trap contaminants that are naturally generated by a person's skin and body. They cover a person's entire body except for their face and hands. To complete the clean room clothing process, which is called gowning, our clean room users put on gloves and a face mask and eye protection. The gloves make a big difference. A moving bare hand produces 200,000 particles per minute, and a gloved hand produces only 150 particles per minute. There are also strict requirements regarding what is allowed in a clean room. For example, normal paper is prohibited because normal paper sheds a lot of particles. Likewise, pencils shed particles. So instead of typical paper and pencils, we use specialized clean room paper and pens that do not shed particles. Let's go into the clean room now and meet one of my students, and she and I will gown up and show you what it's like to enter the clean room. Hey, Callie, thanks for joining me today to learn how to suit up in the clean room so that we can enter the clean room and do our processes. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here and help out. All right, let's go. Oh, wait a minute. Mitch, if you and camera want to go in, you've got to suit up, too. The 
there's a procedure we use when we gown up to go into the clean room, and it's called the gowning protocol. We start with gloves, like Callie's doing right now, and then we start at the top, and we work our way down. So here we go with the gloves. First, we put on the hood. Next, we put on our clean room gowns. Next, we put on our masks. If you don't wear glasses, you need to wear safety goggles. All right, Kelly, we're all set. Let's go. Welcome, I'm Nan Jokerst, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to vacuum systems. In other videos, we've introduced the basic technologies that we use in fabrication, including thin film deposition, patterning, and etching. We've also learned about the extremely clean rooms that we use for fabrication. Now let's talk a bit more about the environment inside much of the equipment, namely the vacuum environment. While working in a clean room is typically a requirement for people performing fabrication tasks, the actual processing, for example, the thin film deposition, requires an additional level of cleanliness. Most of the processes are so sensitive to contaminants and impurities that the air molecules themselves can become embedded in the film and will adversely affect the process, the yield, and performance of our product. This concern can be addressed using vacuum systems. Vacuum systems are typically a chamber or vessel that can be sealed off from the outside environment. After the chamber is sealed, the air molecules contained within the chamber are removed with one or more vacuum pumps. We'll discuss the details of vacuum pumps in several dedicated videos. There are many different types of vacuum pumps, but all pumps serve one basic purpose to remove air from a vacuum chamber. Let's think about a sealed chamber for a minute. The air inside is made up of different types of molecules, such as nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. These air molecules are moving and bouncing around inside the chamber, as we see here. The more molecules, the higher the air pressure in the chamber. As long as the temperature is constant, then pressure is a measure of the amount of gas molecules within the chamber. As we remove the air from the chamber, we can measure just how much air remains by measuring the pressure. Two common units of pressure used in laboratories are Tor and Pascal. A normal room has a pressure of 760 Tor or 100 kilopascal. As we remove the air from the chamber, the pressure will drop accordingly. For example, if we remove 99% of the air from a chamber, the pressure would be about 7.6 torr. How does that high vacuum that we use for thin film deposition compare to outer space? Well, at the International Space Station, the pressure is 10 to the minus 9 torr. In our high vacuum systems for nanofabrication, we typically use pressures of 10 to the minus 7 torr. What's the other difference? Well, there's gravity in our vacuum systems. To establish a vacuum, first we need a sealed chamber. This is typically a solid metal or glass enclosure. In order for the chamber to be any of, of any use, it needs to have an opening of some sort, for example a door or port, that can be opened for putting samples in and taking samples out of the chamber. The door needs to be airtight when it's closed, or air will simply leak back into the vacuum system when we pump it out with a vacuum pump. So the door needs a seal, or we say a gasket, to make it vacuum tight. There are many types of gasket materials, but a common material is vacuum-compatible rubber. 
Once the door is closed and the chamber is sealed, then we can use a vacuum pump to remove the air from the chamber. We'll talk about these different types of pumps in detail in later videos, but briefly, there are many types of pumps available, each with a specific property. In general, vacuum pumps fall into one of three categories. Positive displacement pumps, which push air out of the chamber, momentum transfer pumps, which bounce air molecules out of the chamber, and entrapment pumps, which trap or freeze, in some cases, the air molecules to remove them from the chamber. Vacuum chambers and vacuum pumps are critical tools for us to establish the necessary conditions for many of our nanofabrication processes, namely ultra-clean and air-free. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining me today.